All right, hello everyone. Today we're going to be working on Griffith's quantum mechanics problem number 3.5. We're going to be practicing uh, working with some Hermitian conjugates, or really finding the Hermitian conjugates. Um, all credit for this problem goes to Griffith's. It comes out of the third edition. And I want to quickly state before we get started that you're not going to learn quantum mechanics by well, just watching this video and copying down the answer. Try to give this problem a try on your own. If you really want, you can pause the video and try to work through each one of these parts on your own. If you're spending more than 10 minutes on each one of these parts, you're, you're taking more than you really, you're taking longer than you really need to. So in the worst case scenario, watch maybe 30 to 60 seconds of this video, get a hint, and then try to do the rest of it on your own. And then you can check your solutions with this video if you so choose. Otherwise, uh, let's get started. So for part A, we're going to be asked to find the Hermitian conjugates of x, i, and the first positional derivative. Okay, So x dagger, i dagger, and d by dx dagger. Now to do this... We can go ahead and we can use the integral definition from before. Uh, so bra f cat uh, x g is equal to the integral over all space of uh, f uh, star uh, x g uh, dx. And we could go ahead and work through this and, and do our integration by parts to show that then we're going to get an, uh, an x, f star, g, dx. And then we could show that that's equal to bra x, f, ket, g. But we really don't want to do that. That's doing a, a little bit too much. Now, admittedly, in, uh, doing you know our integration by parts is not the worst way to go about doing this, but what we could go ahead and look at is we could look at the actual operator or you know what, what we're working with here, which is just x. And we can recall from our complex analysis that taking a you know if we have a, some complex number z is equal to x plus i y, then z star is equal to x minus i y. We just change the sign of uh, our complex number. And in the case of x, okay, in the case of uh, uh, of just x, x is only real valued. So it's a function that's only real valued. There's no imaginary part to it. So taking the complex conjugate isn't going to change anything. And so with that, we can just take the complex conjugate of x to find that x dagger is just equal to x, just like we would find by doing this method right here. So this is part a, uh, This is the first part of part A. Uh, you know, this is really simple. We don't need to do this integral. We can just take our complex conjugate. So similarly, in the case of i, i is strictly imaginary, okay? So we can take the complex conjugate of that to find our Hermitian conjugate. So i dagger is just going to equal minus i. And again, you can go through and do the whole integration by parts at, you know, using the integral definition, and you'll get the same exact thing out, okay? Uh, we, we don't need to go to overkill with this. Now, for the first position derivative, we are going to use the integral definition. We are going to go through and do integration by parts because that one's a little bit more tricky. So, uh, for this, we're going to go bra f cat d g dx. And that's going to be the integral over all space. We're just going to know that it's over all space. I'm not going to write the bounds on it because I don't want to run out of space here. But no, it's going to be over all space. We're going to get f star dg dx dx all right now we're going to do our, our integration by parts here so u is going to be f star so du is going to be df star dx dv in this case is going to equal dg and then v is going to equal g okay then we can just use our u uh, uv minus integral v du formula okay so we're going to get f star g 
evaluated overall space minus the integral overall space of df star dx g dx. This conveniently goes to zero because we're assuming that the uh, solution is, is normalized or normalizable. So the limit as we go to either end is going to be zero. And so we're going to be left with minus bra df dx ket g. Okay? And since this has to be equivalent, since this has to be equivalent to this, based on our rules for Hermitian conjugates, d by dx dagger has to equal minus d by dx. Okay? So that's our solution to the last part of part A. All right? All right, in part B, we want to show the following here, and we're given two things that could really help us out. We're given that uh, Q hat plus R hat is equal to Q hat dagger plus R hat dagger. We're also given that some constant uh, times Q hat dagger, or not Q hat dagger, just some constant times Q hat is equal to the complex conjugate of that constant times the Hermitian conjugate of Q hat. And we need to recall that with Hermitians, we'd expect the following, bra f cat Q hat G is equal to bra Q hat dagger f cat G. Okay, we should expect that rule to hold. And so we can do the same exact thing to try and get the following here. And so uh, we would expect bra f cat q hat r hat dagger g, not dagger, sorry, just q hat r hat in, in the cat, equal to bra q hat r hat dagger f cat g. Okay? We'd expect that same thing to hold. So we can just expand upon this using our bra cat notation and our, we, our known rules for Hermitians. All right? And those rules are that the order of operations for these really, really matters. Okay? And in doing so, we can get the following if we just, uh, you know, forget about this guy for a minute. We know that the following has to hold that uh, bra q hat dagger f cat r hat g has to be equivalent. Okay? Just by doing our, our Hermitian rules. And that's a really bad r, so we're going to rewrite that. <laughs> now, going again, using our Hermitian, our, our, you know, our rules of Hermitians and our Brockett notation, we're going to deal with this R, okay? So we're going to get bra, R hat dagger, Q hat dagger, F cat G. And now, rather conveniently, all of these quantities, or, or, you know, all of, all of these are equal, all right? So this is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is equal to this. Oh, wait, hold on a minute. This shows exactly what we wanted, what we want to show. So the Hermitian conjugate of the product Q hat R hat is equal to R hat dagger Q hat dagger. So just in reverse order. That's part B. It's a little bit tricky. All right, if you're not familiar with or you're not comfortable with Hermitians and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff yet. But uh, it can be done. Let's move on to Part C. In Part C, we want to find the Hermitian conjugate of our raising operator. Okay, so from equation 2.48, let's recall uh, the general case of raising and lowering operators. So we get... Um, a hat plus 
minus is equal to 1 on the square root of 2 h bar m omega times minus plus that's a really bad minus plus minus plus i p hat plus m omega x so in the a hat plus case we just go ahead and, and get rid of the get rid of that so a hat plus is going to be 1 on the square root of 2h bar m omega times the quantity minus i p hat plus m omega x bar. Now go back to part A and recall how we did x and i in part A. Okay? We had, we treated them like complex numbers. We took the complex conjugate of those. And we can do the same exact thing here. This is a complex number. To find the Hermitian conjugate, we can just take the complex conjugate. So a hat plus a dagger, the raising operator, uh, the Hermitian conjugate of the, the raising operator is just 1 on the square root of 2 h bar m omega i p hat plus m omega x. All we're doing is just changing the sign of the imaginary part. And that's all we need to do. We can go ahead and, and, and evaluate an integral if you really want to. But I don't. You're learning physics, not mathematics. If this was a mathematics course, you do, you do mathematics. But this is physics. We're often lazy. We oftentimes want to find the fastest way of doing something. That's the fastest way of doing it. And rather conveniently, if you recall from our definition, that this is actually just the lowering operator. So that is Griffith's... Uh, Problem number 3.5, going and work, doing a little bit of work with some Hermitian conjugates. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away. And uh, hopefully I was able to help you out. If I was, let me know. Otherwise, hope to see you next time.